Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of Nation Building. On our program, we examine the political, social, and moral issues in the leadership of the Bahamas. On our program today, we're doing something very, very exciting. We're talking to the next generation of leaders in our country, and we'll introduce our guest to you when we come back from this break. My name is Virgilio Bethel. My position on board Equinox is mate, relief captain. Um, I must say that during our travels and journeys throughout the Exuma Keys, we've had a few um, dark or dead spots. Basically, there were no service. They were just dark spots. We would basically be dead ship out in the cold without any communication. And it's been like that for years, and we've gotten used to it. But Alive has now um, provided us with a service which we can stay communicated during our entire voyages. And um, I've been waiting for Alive to bring their service up to full more coverage throughout the Bahamas, which they've done in an amazing um, amount of time. Um, so, yeah, I would encourage them all to get that service. It's an awesome service, um, no interruptions, and it's awesome. I only come in here for two hours. Okay, but it'll only take one second and it's so delicious. Just just one sec. Yeah, everything tastes delicious. Wow, it's really good. Where do I find it in the store? Right this way, let me show you. Okay, thank you. Wait, I look like Flatterseam. Do the shop. Shuffle. It's been a while, do the shuffle. Oh, I got no shuffle. <laughs> you know what? You need this. What's that? Junkanoo juice medley. That's it, that's it, that's it. Give them all, give them all. Come on, come on. Yeah, that's it. Jamaica Bahama Imports. Always got it. Come on down and get your Junkanoo juice today. The market for the entire family. Soya's Fresh Market. Bahamian owned and operated, Soya's is known for the lowest prices on meats, produce, fresh fruits, and vegetables. Check them out on Facebook and the Freeport News to find out all their weekly specials and their monthly blowout sales. Soya's Fresh Market. Your grocery bill just got lower. Who said you can't get great quality products at an affordable price? If you want the best quality food products at the most affordable prices, you must pick up the Jamaica Bahama brand of fine quality products at your favorite food store. Products like Jamaica Bahama Coconut Water, the most healthy and refreshing drink on the market. Jamaica Bahama Fruit Punch, the only fruit punch in the Bahamas made from real fruit. Jamaica Bahama Coconut Milk, Green Pigeon Peas with Coconut Milk, Condensed Milk, Kidney Beans with Coconut Milk, Corn Beef, Green Pigeon Peas, Mackerel, and Corn. Jamaica Bahama's fine line of products is available at all your favorite food stores and convenience stores nationwide. Telephone 351-8282 in Freeport and 341-4091 in Nassau. I don't wanna win. Welcome back to Nation Building. I'm your host, Winston Pinnock, and today we are here in Freeport, Grand Bahama, the nation's second city, and we are about to have a discussion that I believe is you would really, really be interested in, in, in seeing and experiencing with our young people. These are uh, students of the University of the Bahamas, the Freeport campus, and they're here today to talk about several national issues. Um, one being education. We'll get into a little political discussion as well as it is uh, pretty much a theme of our show. And we're going to have them uh, take an opportunity, starting with Ebony, uh, to introduce themselves to the country. And um, 
share your, your name and a little, just briefly a little about yourself. Okay, so my name is Ebony Maycock and I'm a first year biochem major at the University of the Bahamas. And good morning, my name is Yuri Williams. I'm an associate's degree in engineering student at UB. freshman at the University of the Palmas. I'm studying business management with a focus on entrepreneurship. Hi, my name is Sonny Farkasen. I'm currently studying biochemistry at UB and this is my first year. Wonderful. So we have students from UB um, here. They're bright young Bahamians, uh, raring to go and to share with the nation. And I, I think this morning you not only represent represent the uh, students here in Grand Bahama and young people in Grand Bahama, but people across, young people across the nation. Um, I think in spite of our being a nation of different islands and keys, we as a people, generally speaking, aspire for similar goals. And, and so we'll, 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 um, it's a privilege to have you here this morning. Okay, so let's get started. One of the first things I wanted to talk with you about is, uh, real quickly, is uh, our country's educational system, as you must know, is not where it ought to be. In fact, we are trailing um, the rest of the Caribbean. Uh, we, I think we still have an average of D uh, or thereabouts for our national grade average. Places like uh, Jamaica and Trinidad and some of those other countries, uh, their average is um, somewhere around C plus, some cases B minus. But we're trailing, and the bottom line is we need to improve. And so as some of our brightest minds and young minds in the country, I'd like you to chime in on one. What do you think is needed to improve our country's educational system? And I'll let each of you take a stab at it. Well, first of all, I believe that it starts, it starts from the homes. I, I feel as if... Um, the parents should really chip, on, chip in on what their children are doing um, in and out of class. We really need the, the support from father figures and also the mother figures in the homes. I think also that it's so easy to place the blame on the administrators or the teachers or even the government. But I think that a certain level of responsibility is on the students because I can recall being in high school and a lot of the students, they would just say that they didn't care about what grades that they got or their performance in school. So I think that there should be a change in mentality because if you don't give any effort to your pursuing your education, you can't expect others to accommodate you because this we live in a generation where Everyone has access to, to the internet. Everyone has access to a telephone. So you have the world at your fingertips. You can use multiple resources to educate yourself on different topics. So there's really no excuse for why you can't take responsibility for your education. I have a bit of a counterpoint to what you're saying. You're mentioning how it's mainly the students that like, you know, to a degree, like they should like care about their own grades but I believe that the teachers, um, in, from my experience and like rumors that I heard about in other schools, if when they're taking the BGCSEs, some teachers would just deny the student their like ability to even take it because they believe that their reputation is at stake because we know as a country that we have a grade point average or a letter grade average of a D. Uh, the teachers wanna make sure that their reputation is stayed up there as we um, as a group in like Jack Hayward or St. George's have teachers that have B's, but then that's because you're not allowing that many, t that many students to come in and take these exams and even do the coursework. And a part of this is along with the fact that in the Bahamas we worry about intellectual leakage where students would graduate and they wouldn't come back to the Bahamas and they would get degrees off islands, off island. And it, it kind of starts with the fact that you're not allowed to take your BGCSEs on the island. Ebony? Well, I personally believe that we should have more teachers who are passionate about teaching because the students, they, students, they 
they basically um, do, do you think that the blame more lie on the, the, the teachers because I, I seem to get a divided a mixed review here do you think it's more the responsibility of the, of the teachers to, to bring the students up to to standard or do you think uh, um, as was mentioned earlier I believe it's Tony that said that the responsibility really fundamentally lies with students and to an extent parents? I believe that the blame is equally distributed between the teachers and the student because if the, the student isn't passionate about getting the education, the teachers can't really help them um, understand what, what that, what's actually being taught. And likewise, if the teacher isn't, um, if the teacher really isn't passionate about teaching the student, the child wouldn't really be interested in learning as well. I, I can't recall um, whether it was Ivan or Yuri that mentioned earlier uh, that talked about the fact that the th there is a almost a uh, well a situation where teachers want the the grades to be higher and so some students are denied um, access. Somebody else mentioned that the problem is the home. We want to talk a little about solutions. And my question to you specifically is, we have the problem. We have broken homes. We have uh, challenges. It exists. It is what it is. And our hope, I believe, is to, Im to, m to fix it and, and to have, you know, most a lot of our political leaders and social leaders talk a lot about the problem. And I'm hoping that you would be able to give your thoughts about solutions. So having highlighted what you think the problems are, would you, what do you think, let's take the home for example. You, you, the Bahamas have more single parent homes by, um, that are being led, led by females, by women. Men aren't taking their place in society and so it is, the problem exists. What do you think is the solution to some of these things that you've highlighted? I think we need to call into question the methods that we're using to teach the youth because our world is constantly updating and there are so many different levels of learners or different types of learners. You have your visual, your kinesthetic, you have your, uh, your oral learners and we don't really cater to each and every learning type. So I think that it's so important to really say, okay, what can we do differently to teach our youth and make them passionate about things. So the question to you, what do you think we, the country should do? Is it a governmental problem mainly to fix it? And what is the solution or is it the home, broken homes? What, it, what, what, what is the fix in your mind? I believe like the fix should be that we create like a culture inside schools where as you boost up persons that do be best in classes, and then we already so you incentivize, do you encourage, you create a standard where those who are doing well, you, you, they're rewarded, is that what you're saying? Yes, sir. Like, for example, you already have programs that give scholarships out to people who get a certain amount of grades. I feel like this should be even more, so even more students would feel, yes, I want to get the same things that that person has, or because of like this propaganda being pushed onto them that um, if you're smart in school, then you can get a lot of opportunities, more people would more students would just be more concentrated on getting a better education. So, okay, quickly, because we're going to go to a break in a second. Right. I feel as if teachers should encourage their students much more than they do now. Because, like I said earlier, um, you have a lot of students that com come from broken homes. And so they go home every day and, and get beat down from their parents or talk too terribly. And so they go to school, nothing. I'm not saying that you get the same thing at school, but you're not getting anything any better. And so I feel as if a lot of encouragement should come from the teachers, a lot of motivation, inspiration should come from the teachers and you know, make the students feel like you should want to work because working is really a blessing and they, they feel more you know, happy to you know, get these grades, get these scholarships, make it to these so places in life. Incentivize them. You're watching Nation Building. I'm your host, Winston Pinnock. Right back after these messages.
In the past, I've had a lot of issues um, with service, data service, drop calls. I was encouraged by a very close friend of mine to make the switch, and in doing so, um, my service has been impeccable. The data is very fast, it doesn't spool, it doesn't have to take long to load, so everything works beautifully. I like to know <laughs> what my builds are, um, and it's important that I'm able to simply just pick up my phone and know what my bill is. The front line for the Valley Boys is comprised of about 200 members. Um, it's very important because to be a successful leader, I need to be able to efficiently and consistently communicate with them. It works that way. It's beautiful. The data that you guys provide is flawless. I'm John Williams, Chairman of the Frontline Dance Association of the Valley Boys, and I believe in BEST. It's the market for the entire family. Sawyer's Fresh Market. Bahamian owned and operated, Sawyer's is known for the lowest prices on meats, produce, fresh fruits, and vegetables. Check them out on Facebook and the Freeport News to find out all their weekly specials and their monthly blowout sales. Sawyer's Fresh Market. Your grocery bill just got lower. Hello, I'm Wendell Jones, and every time I sit down and I watch JCN television, I drink the Jamaica Bahama food juice. It's so pleasing to the palate. I've been cooking Bahamian dishes for generations. I now use Jamaica Bahama product. The rice is very fluffy, very tasty, and good eating. Jamaica Bahama product is simply the best. As an insurance agent, my life is go, go, go. But whenever I need a refreshing break, it's Jamaica Bahamas Island Mixed Fruit Drink. Mmm, good. Hi, I'm Debbie Barton from GEMS 105.9 FM. The effect that Island Junkanoo Juice Medley has on me is <laughs> exhilarating. Would you like to try our chocolate? I only come in here for two hours. Okay, but it'll only take one second and it's so delicious. Just just one second. Yeah, everything tastes delicious. Wow, it's really good. Where do I find it in the store? Right this way, let me do it. Okay. And stop talking about Wait, I'm glad to see you. Do the shuffle. Shuffle. It's been a while, do the shuffle. <laughs> do the shuffle. <laughs> you know what? You need this. What's that? Junkanoo Juice Medley. That's it, that's it, that's it. Give me some more, give me some more, give me some more. Come on, come yeah, on. Yeah, that's it. Jamaica Bahama Imports. Always got it. Come on down and get your Junkanoo Juice today. Welcome back to Nation Building. I'm your host, Winston Pinnock, and we're here in beautiful Freeport, Grand Bahama, and we are having the young people of our nation speak to our country and share their thoughts about everything from education, improving our country's educational system, to improving political leadership in the country. But right now, we're going to um, move and talk a little more about, well, talk about Grand Bahama. But before we get to Grand Bahama, uh, are all of y'all from Grand Bahama originally? Born in Grand Bahama? Yes, raised? Sir. Abaco. Abaco? Okay. Um, why, Ebony, are our boys lagging behind the young ladies? I saw the <coughs> graduation of UB, the last set of graduation, and I, I struggled when I saw the, n the, the number of. Um, females that graduating as opposed to the young men. What's your thoughts? And then we'll give, give the guys an opportunity. I believe that it's the lack of the authoritative, the authoritative father figure in the home because if we lack that, the boys have no example to look up to and they don't really have a drive to um, pursue their education further. Uh, aren't you 
Before we get to the young men, aren't you concerned as a young, educated young woman that the you would find a husband, I suppose, from our society. You, will, you aren't you concerned? You, you're going to have children. You, aren't you concerned that there will be a negative impact? Um, it is a great concern because with the amount of young boys who um, don't graduate high school and don't make it into college, that really um, staggers their chances into getting a good job, which means that they can't really provide for a family, which will in turn affect the future generations who will also lack the authoritative father, father figure. Excuse me, sorry, can you repeat the question? Okay, Yuri, w we were saying the young, the, the women, young women are far outpacing young men in, in being educated and, and graduating from college or go attending college. And I was asking what, is, what do you think is the reason for that and uh, what's your thoughts and how we might fix it? Well, I believe that it's really all about influence when in schools, maybe teachers or actually maybe even parents, they don't think that going off to college for like some children aren't, isn't the best. Like some people just aren't ready for a higher education. M I think mainly because it's like boys because they have a lot of influences. There may be negative influences from peers or um, the culture in the Bahamas where drinking is just so prominent or going out and hanging out with like this bad company in general. Um, those people just don't care about bettering themselves, so you see less and less. How do we fix it? How do we get me young men to become more focused? I'd just say make sure that you publicize and emphasize the programs and fields that they can go into into college. Realize that there are things that like cater to them, something that interests them, like agriculture or architecture, engineering. Just r keep that like on their minds and always in their faces. Uh, Ivan, do you think that our young men are not <sighs> motivated, excited, interested in learning because of the system of education, because of what their natural inclinations may be, may not be catered to, or is it some other reason? I feel as if the young men of our country, they're so used to you know, just hanging on the block. That's what I, we call it, the blocks. And it's like nowadays it's their natural habitat. And you have a lot of a lot of young men in different gangs or keeping terrible, terrible company. And now they feel it. They feel as if it's cool, but it really isn't. You don't. You don't. You don't find any positivity in hanging on the block, you know, how could you make money hanging on the block? How could you provide for your family hanging on the block? And they don't believe as if it's an easier way when you do go to college. Like, come on, there, there's jobs out there, there's millions to be made, and you can't find any success hanging on the block. You can't find any success hanging with a friend that doesn't motivate you to do good. If you were to say, I'm gonna rob this person. That bad family right there. Oh, I can, I can help you. I can do this with you, and you both setting yourself up for destruction, like just self-destruct, just like that. Like it makes any sense. And so, like I like when you said, I feel as if it it comes from the father figure. I feel as if the men are the ones that we really need. I understand that mothers are there and that they care, but the fathers are what we really need in life. Tony, it, it seems to me, and I enjoy listening especially to the young men, because it seems like our country is struggling because of lack of male leadership. Um, you are a bright young woman. You are looking to the future, just as I said to Ebony. Uh, we keep hearing from you young people the, the absence of fathers in the home, the absence of male leadership. Um, what do you think I I can be done from the government, the church, civil society, or any other group to create a new culture in our country where men find it 
attractive to be, I guess, what God intended for men to be, to be leaders and to provide um, the kind of support for their mentoring for their young, especially young boys. What do, what's your thoughts? I think that oftentimes, because of that lack of the father figure in the homes, they often relate to the people that we see in the media, which is all about drugs um, and getting money in illegal ways, which isn't the portrayal of a man that you want to see in society. So I think we need to revamp the, the image of a successful man, especially in the Bahamas, because I notice that a lot of us, or a lot of young men, they have empty dreams. They think, I'm just gonna get this money, but they have no practical methods in place to actually achieve their goals. So maybe teaching them more skills to actually go about it, or just having the passion behind it to reach what you, what you wanna achieve. Is, is sh should this process begin at primary, at secondary? Is it, is it and, and one other question, it, who has the greatest uh, responsibility? We know the foundation is the home and it, it's broken. So you have the church, you have schools, you have the government. Who really have to lead the charge in getting our society restored? I believe that it should start in the secondary um, schools because that's the times when students are maturing and the way their mindsets change psychologically. You don't think uh, after primary school the minds of young men are already formed for good or bad? You don't think so? Well, I feel like it matters way more in secondary school. Primary school, I feel like you can excuse behaviors of some children. Uh, for instance, like f thinking from my point of view, uh, I matured a lot in secondary school, mainly during grade nine, going into grade 10, so past junior school into high school. So I just believe that in general, maybe that most people would be maturing around that time anyway. And the government, I feel like, should be the people that are taking this charge to uh, making sure that uh, education just be improved. Like they have the greatest say. They control government schools. You see most children in government schools, so they would be able to change So you anything. think government should lead the way? I feel, as if, I feel as if it should start in the primary because by the time you're in grade five, you're in grade six, these children already know right from wrong. They already know what's happening in the real world. They already, they already have, they have access to the internet, so they know what's going on. And grade four, five, six, you have these students listening to, like Tene said, the um, music videos that have sex, money, drugs, and by the time as they get into second get secondary school, that's basically all they know. And you already have churches trying to pour into these students, but because that's what already into their heads, they, they're they already stuck with, with it. And so, yeah. Is the church playing its role sufficiently? Wow. Is it, is it not? Is it doing enough? Is it outperforming government? Is the church doing more than government in um, helping to reshape and to help the society as far as the foundation, the family? I think that as the youth, we typically see religion and church as being something for older people. So we typically just ignore their values and we say we can go on our own path. And though the church is the sense of morality in our society, I believe that if the students or the young, the young people aren't interested in actually pursuing that goal with God, how can we say that they're responsible for it? Because everyone is entitled to their own beliefs. And though we are a Christian nation, we have a blend of different uh, religious beliefs and backgrounds. Ton, um, um, Ebony, aren't you concerned? You have a, a as um, Tony mentioned, a, a society of young people that mostly tune out of church. But you yourselves have said in all of your conversation here today, You've pointed to the fact that the social decay is the real problem and the home. And the, the church, whatever religious background you, believe, you share or believe in, the, the church and the religious community, spiritual values, really is the answer, even from your own assessment, 
And so why wouldn't you as young people be more inclined to pursue that to the extent that you recognize that, look, in order to get values restored in your country, there has to be morality and some form of spiritual value in you as young people. Why, why, why isn't that coming home? Well, as they already said, society has already set a standard whereas drug, sex, and money is what we, is what people desire and what we need in order to be cool or survive and thrive. But if you, inst if you place religion into the home, it will give us a sense of morality and it will give people a sense of values that, hey, this isn't right, let me pursue the righteous path and, and uh, um, get money and achieve my goals in a moral way. In a moral way. A lot of young people feel as if a religion won't lead you to success. They feel as if being in church every Sunday won't bring the income that they try to get. But what if things were to switch? What if you were to see people in church getting up there in life, like re reaching this, this high success. From my experiences, I usually hear Christians complain about, oh God, I, I need this, or I, I, I need you to help me with this. So, 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 so are you saying then that from the average young person's point of view, when they look at the church is not attractive or Christianity or churches they're not attractive because uh, it's mainly needy people that you see in church they see the they see the secular people succeeding life, financially succeeding so it's not attractive it's not attractive Let, let's let's jump quickly we'll spend so much time on this and and begin the conversation about grand baham and I, we, we're getting into some dicey areas and talking about national life so we're not going to spend a lot of time here but all of you are from grand baham i know um ivan said he, you're um from Abaco. Do you agree that Grand Bahama is the, in fact, it's not a matter of opinion, it is the most well laid out community in, in one of the best in the Caribbean as far as infrastructure and all of the uh, positive amenities. Why, in your opinion, quickly, aren't, uh, is Grand Bahama struggling and lagging behind and what, 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 what do you think is the answer? I uh, want each of you to take a strike at this. What is the answer to turn this society, this community, and Grand Bahama around? Well, I believe that, like most politicians say, it's the younger generation that is coming up. And I feel as if, if we decide to step out and put a foot in and give an opinion while our minds are fresh on how we should, or how we can help to build Grand Bahama back to the way it used to be, I feel as if... So, so you, you want more, inter uh, uh, more involvement, more, um, you, you think ideas will flow from the society right. and those who lead need to do that. Uh, Yuri, quickly. Well, I believe that in Grand Bahama, um, like recent hurricanes and stuff, they would like kind of stagger and stag cause our um, development to kind of stagnate. So. I feel like external help would be needed, like investment and just further. Okay, um, so you, you want to see more investment. Ebony? Um, I personally believe that we should have a sense of community because we can't really build up Grand Bahama if we don't come together as one with one mindset and one goal in order to achieve what is needed. And we don't really need to go back to the old Grand Bahama, but I personally believe that we can uh, um, achieve a better Grand Bahama. Tony? Piggybacking off of what Ebony just stated, I think that it's the change of mentality. We Bahamians need to take initiative and be the change that we want to see in our island. You're watching Nation Building. I'm your host, Winston Pinnock. Right back after these messages. Being awarded a free live phone in the Making A's Pace campaign last year was one of the most exciting things that ever happened to me. I use my phone to play games, chat with friends over the summer break, and watch YouTube videos. Then I got an idea to start my own balloon business. 
Being able to use my own phone to start up my balloon business was so important to me. I used my phone to research prices and learn how to do balloon designs that I currently offer to my customers today. The internet speed was so good. Oh my gosh, there was no buffering and the videos were very clear. I am so grateful to Alai from my new phone. Thanks Alai. My name is Kara Snowles, owner of the Balloon Princess, and I believe in best. So what are we gonna watch? I wanna watch Spider-Man. I have the popcorn. No, I don't wanna watch that again. Let's watch something else. So what do we think? We'll take it. Great. At Home Design Center, you'll find everything you need to breathe new life into your home. Furniture and accessories that will give you the style, comfort, and accents your whole family will fall in love with. It'll feel like home before you even get it there. Home Design Center, make your house a home. It's the market for the entire family. Sawyer's Fresh Market. Bahamian owned and operated, Sawyer's is known for the lowest prices on meats, produce, fresh fruits, and vegetables. Check them out on Facebook and the Freeport News to find out all their weekly specials and their monthly blowout sales. Sawyer's Fresh Market. Your grocery bill just got lower. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. Would you like to try our chunk? Maybe? I only come in here for two hours. Okay, but it'll only take one second and it's so delicious. Just just one sec. Yeah, everything tastes delicious. Wow. It's really good. Where do I find it in the store? Right this way. Let me do it. Okay. Thank you. Wait, I'm glad to see you. Do the shuffle. shuffle. It's been a while, do the shuffle. Oh, I shuffle. <laughs> you know what? You need this. What's Junk that? Junkanoo Juice Medley. That's it, that's it, that's it. Give me some more, give me some more. Come on, come on. Yeah, that's it. Jamaica Bahama Imports. Always got it. Come on down and get your Junkanoo Juice today. Hello and welcome back to Nation Building. I'm your host, Winston Pinnock, and I'm here today in beautiful Freeport, Grand Bahama. The best city in the Bahamas, is it? <laughs> uh, we have with us um, students from the University of the Bahamas. They, I believe, are the Bahamas' brightest young people, sharing their thoughts about the future of this wonderful country that God has given us. And we are creating a platform for the young people to speak so you can hear from them, their thoughts. After all, it's going to be their country to run if uh, some of the elder statesmen get out of the way shortly. You'll have the opportunity to lead. I believe that'll happen one way or the other. We're joined in this segment by a, someone has joined our panel, young Mr. Timothy Newbold who is also one of UB's student. Could you introduce yourself to the country? Yes, I'm Mr. Pinnock. My name is Timothy Newbold. I'm a biochem major 
at the University of the Bahamas, and I'm currently a freshman. Good. And I know we're going to shoot a quick question to you on Grand Bahama, give you an opportunity, because you weren't a part of the last segment, to comment on that. Um, before I do that, though, I just want to provoke a thought. You can think about it, and then we'll be able to, so I'm giving you a head start. Our country, the Bahamas, have an is in an interesting period when it comes to leadership. We have had a process of growth in our country since 1973. Uh, well, even before that, before independence, we had the majority rule in 1967. We have had the privilege of seeing a young 36-year-old uh, Lyndon, Sir Lyndon Pinlin, assume leadership in the country. Um, we then had 25 years of that uh, leadership in the formation of our country. And when we shifted from Sir Lyndon, we went to a 45-year-old uh, Hubert Ingram, former Prime Minister Ingram. And then we shifted to a 59-year-old uh, leader in the form of Barry Gladstone Christie, former PM. And then we moved on to a 63-year-old um, Dr. Hubert Minnis, current Prime Minister. And so I want you to think about that for a minute and see if you are, how do you feel about the fact that we seem to be moving to an older and older generation in terms of the country's leadership. But I, I have a question for you, Tim. And the question is, what quickly is your thoughts about uh, Grand Bahama is your home? What is your thoughts about how we can move Grand Bahama from where it has been in a stagnation to a place where it, to its fulfill its purpose? Well, <coughs> I know a lot of people on the island, you know, of Grand Bahama, we, we place blame on the Grand Bahama Port Authority. But from doing my research, I believe that it's more of a government issue. I believe that if the government of the Bahamas will work closely with the Grand Bahama, with the Grand Bahama Port Authority to create new policies and new initiatives um, for foreign investment, um, I would believe that we would see more investors come in to do business in Grand Bahama. For an example, I believe if the Grand Bahama Port Authority is allowed to uh, approve a uh, business license for foreign transactions, I should say foreign transactions, without the consultation of the government, then we would see Grand Bahama move in a, in a way where we would see more investors wanting to come to the island because I know the current process is the Port Authority approves a business license for a foreign investor and then they have to wait on the government. Um, and waiting on the government, I understand that process can take up to 150 days. And if I'm an investor and I want to invest in Grand Bahama, um, I, I don't, the process, the process is, too, is too tedious. I also believe in relation to Grand Bahama moving forward. I know if we want Grand Bahama, to, if we want to see more investment, I also believe that the government should create, you know, new policies and uh, new immigration policies, I should, I should say, in which the introduction of an H-1B visa, the H-1B visa is a visa that attract, that attract um, high-skilled individuals um, in the financial and the technology sector. And with that H-1B visa, I believe what Grand Bahama needs is critical mass, critical mass to develop. Um, and you're talking about people. People, exactly, critical mass. And, we, and, and the investors would bring that because I, I believe that with, with the H-1B visa, the investors coming to, to, coming to Grand Bahama, investing, uh, people, people be, uh, more immigrants, I should say, will be allowed to invest, on, uh, invest in Grand Bahama, which would provide economically more jobs that the Bahamian people really want. Because many be Grand, Grand Bahamians, they always say, oh, there's no job, and the port isn't doing anything. I believe that the Grand Bahama Port Authority is significantly promoting this island, trying to get this island to the next level, but it can only do so if it's more, you know, you know how we say eco-friendly with the environment, if it's more government-friendly with the Port Authority and allowing them to uh, do the things that they need to do to move this island to the next level. Well said. I wouldn't rebut you. I know there are many out there who would have much to say, but today is an opportunity for you, the young people, to speak. And so these are your thoughts. 
and i um, happy to know that you can share them. Let's talk then about our country from a leadership point of view, government. Is there anyone here that have a desire, ambition to serve in leadership, um, being a representative in our government? <laughs> okay. I had that in mind, but the current process scares me. Um, I'm gonna echo uh, Pastor Lockhart's sentiment. Leaders, leaders, when we understand the capacities of leadership, leadership is not about personal advancement. Leadership is about exalting others. Leadership is about serving, ser serving others. Leadership is about preparing an environment, an atmosphere for other young people like us to see our dreams, visions, and goals become a reality. And the only way we can do that is if the government realize that the young people are the future. But don't they have been saying that forever? They, you know, like my fellow entrepreneurs say, you know, talk is cheap. They say it, but for, for an example, I, I just understand that uh, Dr. Hubert Minnis is, introduce, is introducing uh, two-term limits for prime minister, which I think that's a step forward to the future because in the past, if they wanted the young people dreams and vision and goals become a reality, you wouldn't have a prime minister who is probably 71 being in power or uh, every, every other year when the government changed, it's him, it's him, it's him. No, you know, that's not advancement. But, but, but if I can challenge you, you're talking, you're, what you're calling for is a change of system because the way we operate in our country, um, in our system of democracy, and I see you preempted me, but I was, I was getting to asking, and maybe I should just go ahead and ask the question. Is the current system of government, Tony, working for us? Is it healthy to continue on this part of having a, the kind of democracy that we practice, the Westminster democracy, as opposed to maybe a, re, a democratic republic that America practices? Uh, and and I'm not saying it has to be strictly either or, but it, is, it, is it that the system we have is fine, it's worked for us, or is it really a systemic problem uh, that we need to shift? I think that a lot of times when we implement a new government, they have so many new plans and policies that they wish to implement, but then their term is over and nothing happens, nothing changes. So perhaps if we were to switch to a new government system, maybe more youth would be involved in it. They would have more interest in pursuing it because they know they would actually get things done. But you, you, you talked about time. Are you suggesting that government five years is not enough to do what needs to be done? I'm suggesting that perhaps the government or the current government or whichever political well, party, yeah, they are not being as effective as they can be. Now, I, I before Ivan is biting at the bit, but before I let him get the mic, I need you to bring some clarity to that. So to be specific. You're not saying that they don't have enough time. Are you saying that those who, are, who have the privilege of serving in leadership, they're not being effective, they don't ha they're not prioritizing? What is it, what is causing them to not bring to fruition those ideas that they sell to the public? I think that maybe they're not being as effective as they can be. So do you see that as a lack of ability or laziness or what? What, what, is, what do you see as a young person that is causing your government not to be able to deliver for you? I think that it's definitely not a lack of ability because we have so many qualified individuals comprising our political parties, but maybe our government system just isn't working. Maybe there's time for a change. Okay. I feel as if that, I feel as if any polit political party that gets into government, they, they always have time. Five years is a lot of time. And to get into government, they usually do the extraordinary. They go to the houses of the citizens of the Bahamas doing the most, doing whatever they can to, to get into the government. And then when they're there, nothing. They, not, nothing, nothing happens. But, 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 but does the citizens of our country hold governments, those who they elect, responsible, first of all, how do we choose our leaders? Do you approve of the method? I mean, is, is this an effective way, as we talked about, Tim mentioned earlier, alluded to? Is, it, are we, is this an effective method of getting people selected? Yes, I think, I think that it's, it's very effective. But then again, it all, it all boils down to 
the political leaders themselves. It all boils down to... So you don't think it's your ref representatives? You think it's the leader of the political organization? I believe that it's the organization it's itself. Okay, so you believe the party system is, is a hindrance? Yes. How so? Our government now is not only one man. It's our PM and his team. And so after his team... And by that you mean the cabinet, the executives. Right, mm -hmm. the cabinet and the executives. After, after they do what they can to get into um, the government, it's, they it's shift their focus. You think? Right. I, I feel as if they like they just they just change their ideas. They they go from the mindset of doing this for the Bahamians and doing that for the Bahamians, but when when they get in. It's themselves and not the behemoth citizens. Yuri? <coughs> kind of going back to what you said earlier about the ages of our parliamentary leaders and kind of what Casey was talking about with the party not just being um, the prime minister that's in charge and being the leader of you know everything and taking charge. Um, I don't really t mind the, like older leaders. Like I don't think that we should have a PM that's 30 years old, or each year it goes down like an age. As long as like the ideals are what we want, as long as they're hearing out the the younger generations and going through with it, because um, knowing how the population is, we will always. I don't think it's going to change. We're always going to like look to older people and think that yes, they're the authoritative figures just play plainly because of age. So well, why not just have an older person that believes in the ideals of the younger people? Simple. Tim, um, I think Casey Casey touched on it, but I believe it also boils down to the ignorance of the Bohemian people. I believe that, you know, you know, it's the people time or you know whatever the PLP slogan may be. You know, we select government. I think that was the Free National Movement slogan. Free, right. I believe that we select g we shouldn't select a government based on the slogan. I think that we should do our research, especially if we want what's best for our kids. So, so, so in doing that, let me interrupt you. In doing that research, let's, let's be specific. You are choosing a member of parliament. You are choosing a prime minister of your country. You're choosing senators. It's a package deal that you right. get. Who do you really vote for? Do you vote for, do you, in making that on election day, in, in marking that X, do you make that decision based on the candidate that is supposed to be your representative? Do you make that decision on who is leading the political party? Um, you don't know who your senators are going to be, but it's a part of the package. What is it that you're making that decision on? I believe the decision is based on the leader of the party. Okay, so we're having a presidential system and we just get other people thrown in with it. Exactly. And, and that <laughs> works for you? Is that yeah. something that you think is workable? Continuing well, in the into the future? No, no. I'm going to say no. Um, I don't want to get... Okay, so without getting too deep into yeah. the bushes, do you think that system, that package deal, is a, uh, fine for you all as young people? Do you think it's workable moving forward? I think it's workable. Um, I don't really agree with the fact that when you're voting for, a, you know, the prime minister, that you're just voting for the leader. Like, I th believe that when voting time happens, you're voting for the party. Because, again... Okay, it's so not just as so and you're comfortable with the platform of a party and accepting that, yes, right? Yes, I'm okay. comfortable with and that. And what say you? Like Yuri said, I, I feel as if moving forward that what we have now, I feel as if it, 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 it can work and I feel as if it will work, but it all, once again, boils down to the mindsets of the, um, the mindsets of the leaders that we have in government at this time. You have to have a mindset of moving forward. You have to have that drive. You have to have that 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 killer instinct when, you, as soon as you get into the government, you know I'm I'm gonna. But do but that. bear in mind now, you are choosing, and the citizens are doing the choices. So the question really is, in talking about the system, if if you have someone who do doesn't have those qualities, but they happen to be leading your political party, the one you like, you are you voting for the 
person who doesn't have the ideas to move your country forward, but they're in the party that you subscribe to the philosophy of the party? Or do, how, do you, how do you sort that out? They always give the ideas. They always tell us what they're going to do. And it's, it's so appealing to our minds. And we feel as if that their ideas will, will boost our country's economy. And when, when they get in, nothing happens. T Tony, how do we fix that? How do, how do we fix that? Where, uh, as, as um, was said earlier, um, well, Yuri talked about, and Ivan, I guess, endorsed the fact that it can work, but there needs to be a fixing. How do you fix the fact that you have leaders selling you an idea that you like, uh, they don't follow up on doing it? What is the problem? Is it, the, is it you're being deceived, or is it there's a system that's creating a challenge? How do you see it? I think that we hold on to promises and not practicality because a lot of the things that we may view as necessary for moving Grand Bahama or all of the islands of the Bahamas forward, we don't really do our research, like Timothy said, to see how it can actually work in our current economic state or our current society. Okay, so I have two quick questions as we begin to wrap up here and we are running completely out of time, and that is, one, and you're going to get one strike at it, at it, it's a yes or no or quick answer question. Uh, should we have fixed state for general elections and should we have term limits for our country's leaders? Yes. For both? Yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. I say yes to both as well. That's yes for me. It's going to have to be yes for me as well. Okay, so if the answer is all yes, quickly, why? The Bahamas want to move forward. We always be up this be up this thing. We want to be a high tech in this, high tech like the rest of the world. We want to be a part of the rest of the world. Well, the rest of the world has term limits. So if we want to be a part like a part of this growing economic high tech industry society, then we need to incorporate every single thing and includes limit. I agree with everything that he's saying. I I too agree with Timothy. I feel as if that you see the rest of the world succeeding. And we're here being different, not saying that being different is wrong. We're here being different and nothing is happening, but yet the rest of the world are progressing. Antonia, you have the last word. You're the only lady left on the <laughs> panel. I also agree with every sentiment expressed, and I think that it will be beneficial in moving our country forward. On behalf of all of us here at Nation Building, we want to thank you for tuning into our, our program this week. It's been a great delight bringing these young minds to the country and uh, invite you to, to tune in to our next edition of Nation Building. And as always, have a great week. My name is Virgilio Bethel. My position on board Equinox is mate relief captain. Um, I must say that during our travels and journeys throughout the Exuma Keys, we've had a few um, dark or dead spots. Basically, there were no service. They were just dark spots. We would basically be dead ship out in the cold without any communication. And it's been like that for years, and we've gotten used to it. But Alive has now um, provided us with a service which we can stay communicated during our entire voyages. And um, I've been waiting for Alive to bring their service up to full more coverage throughout the Bahamas, which they have done in an amazing um, amount of time. Um, so, yeah, I would encourage them all to get that service. It's an awesome service, um, no interruptions, and it's awesome. Hello, I'm Wendell Jones, and every time I sit down and I watch JCN television, I drink the Jamaica Bahama food juice. It's so pleasing to the palate. I've been cooking Bahamian dishes for generations. I now use Jamaica Bahamas product. The rice is very fluffy, very tasty, and good eating. Jamaica Bahama product is simply the best. As an insurance agent, my life is go, go, go. But whenever I need a refreshing break, it's Jamaica Bahamas Island Mixed Fruit Drink. Mmm, good. Hi, I'm Debbie Barton from GEMS 105.9 FM. 
the effect that Island Junkanoo Juice Medley has on me is <laughs> exhilarating. <laughs>